stop sharing about it in this one. So since we are waiting for uh, Hanapi to be prepared, I would like to explain the, something basic about the developmental biology process. So there are many approaches, um, methodologically or technically, in investigating the developmental process in, in animals. And from the very, very classic, very, very simple and undeveloped one that researchers uh, commonly use the method in investigations on directly on living embryo. So what kind of the embryo they study on oh, embryo resulted from external fertilizations like from the frog embryo and also sea urchin. Why they they firstly focus on investigating the development of embryo in such species in such creatures because it is very easy to to directly observe, you just collect such a fertilized eggs of the frog or the ursine, and then we can observe it in in certain times, like uh, yeah, every hours, for example, or every thirty minute, we can investigate that the developmental process of such embryo. So the very basic techniques of uh, in in understanding the developmental process, but then. Um, scientists also expand their technique by uh, investigating, by observing the living embryo growing outside the wombs beyond the, the external fertilization. So they also focus on investigating the, the bird, for example, and reptiles because they, uh, such animals have an oh, embryo living in the, in the eight. And it is also very simple to investigate the developmental process in the eggs because we just you know incubate it and then we can observe the developmental stage of such bird for example and reptiles like snake and and uh, lizard and also sea turtles for example and even alligator so that is the method in understanding of all the developmental process in in vertebrate but then that's also that's only limited in understanding about the developmental process outside the wombs, outside the uterus. And the researchers also try to develop the method, the technique in investigating that uh, how the embryo growing inside the uterus, like uh, commonly found in mammals. And then they, they investigate the static, for example, like uh, ultrasonography and many kind of imaging uh, device in order to understand uh, the diplomatal stage of mammals embryo. But it's just morphologically uh, investigations conducted and therefore they develop like what that's that's understanding about the stages about the process. But when they want to know about the mechanisms uh, of such a developmental process itself, they need to understand deep inside the cells and the tissue. So there will be investigate using the embryonic cell cultures and tissue cultures for the embryo and also like uh, organ or embryonic transplantations will be very useful in, in such a field. Therefore, uh, until recently, the, the cell culture, tissue cultures, and also the deployment of the tissue transplantations are uh, oh, growing rapidly uh, with with very you know sophisticated approach and and modern techniques and instruments in order to investigate the mechanisms of the deployment process in in animals and also in human, of course. And the latest one is also combinations between such a technique with very uh, super visuals, like understanding about the stages and also in, in deeper part by tissue cultures, then combine it with molecular approaches. So they use uh, uh, the molecular approach to understand the roles of gene expressions, the roles of every single genes 
involved in a developmental process of animals and humans as well. So there are many techniques like uh, measuring of uh, gene expression through uh, the mRNA expressions uh, quantifications and also in situ hybridizations by by identifying the locations where such a genes are expressed in during the developmental process, for example. And then also the technique blotting technique, you may also learn about it during your previous study that uh, there is a blotting technique that you could also uh, quantify the level of expressions about the genes and mRNA itself and also proteins levels. And to understand also the 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 matter of gene structures, then there will there there is a sequence method to understand whether kind of the mutation, for example, could drive the the directions could alter the directions of the developmental process in in humans and animals. And there is, there are also the techniques in modifying the genes itself. So there is a TO, I mean knockout, and also KD knockdown and also KI knock in. So there are the methods in order to modify the genes. The knockout is mean that the expressions of genes during the embryonal process, uh, during the embry uh, certain embryonal stage, will could be modified by by uh, you know uh, suppress it or by increase it. So modifying the expressions of genes by by uh, interfering the uh, transcription process, like when when the gene will be expressed to be transcribed to be mRNA, then it will be stopped. Or when the mRNA will be translated to be protein, then it is uh, uh, stopped. And therefore, the expressions of gene is impaired. And after what the scientists uh, we also uh, could investigate by knockout by stopping the expressions of such gene, by inhibiting the, the expressions of such gene, what will happen with the embryo. So by knowing that the, the, the effect of such a knockout of the genes, we will understand what are the functions, what the crucial function of such a gene in the developmental process. And another type is knock-in. Knock-in is, uh, it is uh, when a certain gene from another animals or from other organisms, even from from invertebrate, for example, from mushroom as well, uh, could be, you know, inherited by animals, other animals, so inter interspecies uh, uh, genes expressions. So certain genes, for example, the fluorescent genes collected from uh, isolated from from that uh, uh, like uh, fluorescent mushroom, for example, or any kind, or even from uh, from the fireflies, for example, the fluorescent gene could be I uh, could be uh, isolated and then then infected into the genome of the uh, mammalian embryos, and therefore the mammalian embryo could be uh, uh, fluorescent. And by understanding of such a the fluorescence marker. Then the scientists will investigate the the directions of of uh, development of such a part. For example, which part of the embryo that will be the head or the, the the extremity, like leg or hand, and which part of of other part will be uh, a kind of uh, another organs, and therefore they will use it the fluorescence technique by by modifying the genes of of such embryo using. Oh yeah, th th this is a kind of a transgenic approach, and there is also knock knock uh, knock out and knock down as well. So by using uh, knock down knock out, you remove you delete such a genes. By knock down, you you delete you inhibit the expression of such gene. By but by knock in, it is mean that you uh, uh, add some. Uh, a kind of another gene from another animals to be expressed in in your targeting species. So there are many approaches in understanding such uh, of developmental process in animals. And related to the developmental process, uh, the genes play a vital role. Even of course there is interactions, interventions between the genes and environmental factors. 
but still the genes play uh, the, the common role, the involved role here. And gene, the DNA, uh, the partial gene encoded the partial protein in, in, in the embryo will be transcribed to be mRNA and then mRNA will be translated to be protein and then protein after translations and it will modify it. So there will be post transitional translational modifications that is PTM. So there is modified. There are many modifications to the protein to be functional or regulatory protein or structural protein. And during the embryonic development, the regulator uh, proteins play a very, very crucial essential roles. Like, uh, for example, so how these genes will uh, will regulate another functions of of another proteins and other genes as well. And there there are switch on gene and switch up genes or protein. That's call it regulator protein because this protein. Uh, is not function as a, functioning as a structural part of the embryo and also uh, uh, they don't play uh, functional roles in, in physiological process, but they function to control the expressions of, another, of other genes or other proteins and therefore it's, it's called the regulatory protein. But if a functional protein, they may function as enzymes functions as hormones, protein hormones, and also as a signaling between this, this embryonic cells itself. And also that should be the structural protein that is needed uh, to develop the cells itself and the part of its, uh, its embryo and the development of organisms. And please remember that the, the expressions of the genes during the developmental process follow the spatials and the temporal pattern. So there should be the, the role for the gene to be expressed. They did not express it in, in uh, many part, in, in all part of the body or all part of the embryo. They should uh, follow the spatial. So there is a space regulations there. For example, the genes that will regulate the growth of the hair should be expressed only in the in the hair part of the embryo, in the caudal part. But for the genes that uh, regulate the expressions of, for example, uh, 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 another, another part like uh, tail in animals, then it should be expressed only in the caudal part, not in the frontal part. And also in human, for example, that the genes express it, uh, the genes regulate for the express it for the, the formations of our eye also only express it in in very upper part of our body not in lower part could you imagine for example when the such a genes are uh, mistakes in the expressions in in spatial uh, dimensions then such a gene for uh, for our eyes express it in another part like in our stomach then then the tissue in our stomach will be developed to be the eyes and it will be very very strange for you uh, having such an eye in your stomach so that is spatial spatial uh, uh, role for the expressions of such genes and for the temporal pattern it is mean about the time of expressions there are certain genes that express it continuously in uh, in any time point of the developmental process of such embryo so, it, so during the zygote, marula, blastula, gastrula, and the diplomatal states uh, of their dam, like organ, organogenesis uh, period, they are continuously expressed. But there are also uh, many genes expressed putatively. So they are only expressed in, in very specific times. So uh, like if you uh, just uh, take a very certain uh, uh, simple instances like uh, the expressions of uh, the genes regulate the, the sexual maturity will never be expressed during the developmental like early developmental uh, stage like uh, when you when you are in were in fatal stage inside the womb of your mother it is impossible for you for having uh, that, that, that such a gene to be expressed and then you will 
produce the gamete like uh, producing sperm or uh, ovule, functional ovule. And then such a gene will be stopped to, use, to be expressed in early stage. But then later in, in your life during uh, the puberty stage, such a gene will be expressed. That is the temporal because they they should be expressed in the right time and in, in, in the right time and the right place. So the spatial is about the location or the place where the genes will be expressed in, in the body, in the embryo's uh, part. And the, the temporal pattern, it is mean that the gene expression follow with that, oh, the, the time, about the time space of the expressions, whether that will be continuously expressed or will be expressed only in particular times. So uh, remember about such a basic to understand that uh, the fundamental a process in regulating of uh, developmental in in hum in human and also in a other animals, even vertebrates and invertebrates, and also uh, during the developmental stage, developmental process in in like a zygote and um, embryo itself, a growing embryo, there are many kind of the factors coming from inside of the cells and outside also in the the fecundity of the cells uh, will affect whether the, that of uh, the embryo, the zygote will be divided, will be developed to be the functional organisms or even fail to develop. So in the internal part, you can see here that uh, there will be this uh, genetic factors like epigenetic regulations that are for example, uh, the protein of pay, as in the packaging protein for the chromosomes and then the factors affecting the transcriptional uh, mechanisms. So call it the regulation for transcriptionals. And also that this is a plasmic determinants the, that are endogenous factors bearing by such a cells like uh, in, in embryonic cells. So there, there are uh, internal factors, oh, asymmetric uh, cytoplasmic determinants and also the genetic factors. But remember also there are many uh, external factors that uh, could direct and determine the, 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 uh, the, the stage and also that the fate of such a zygote, whether it will be developed or not. So it should be signaling from another embryonic cells or another uh, tissues uh, surrounding that embryos and also this is also endocrine signaling or uh, coming from hormones, for example, and also the communication between uh, embryonic cells is up. So for example, uh, in, in uh, uh, development, I mean, in other stages like or uh, in advanced stage, there are there are many cells surrounding such a zygote, and therefore it should be uh, interacted and communicated with with uh, uh, other cells to uh, get kind of directions or or uh, the fate of their development. And also, we remember for the movement and other activities of of the embryonic cells, there should be. Uh, the extracellular matrix playing a role in, in the directing of uh, the migrations of the cells and also the development and uh, many kinds of uh, formations of embryonic cells and uh, also the mechanical force uh, that may or uh, causes the, the, the formations in embryo could so affect. So there are many internal and external factors that will determine the developmental process of, of the embryo during uh, their early living and are also advanced living stage. Okay, so I think that is uh, probably next. This is your talks. We'll explain about the technique, but we hope that Hanabi is will be ready now. Okay, Hanabi, how was your slide? Can you see it? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, okay. But, but uh, before I 
share my presentation. Uh, I'm so sorry uh, because uh, for this session, uh, I only just uh, finished the uh, first uh, chapter. Uh, it is uh, chapter eight, uh, but uh, I have already made uh, the chapter nine and ten, uh, but uh, I'm still uh, don't understand about the this material, so uh, I can uh, present uh, chapter eight, uh, sir. Okay, please, you can share it now. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 